Well, George Bloom, welcome back to the podcast. It's always good to have you on. Bobby, thanks for having me on. Love coming in here. Always a great mastermind session and talk about current things in the market and everything else. This time I actually have the microphones plugged in so <laughs> there won't be any falling off at all. So George, talk to us about the current real estate market. What's going on? Well, current market right now, um, as we spoke about a little bit earlier, it is a super hot market for buyers and sellers and a little bit more in depth about that. Right now, it is a seller's market. So mm. inventory is low, prices are high, and I'm talking about like high at their highest. You know, you put a house in the market for 250,000, you're gonna be getting offers for 275. Right. Over and above asking, I have multiple listings right now and all of them, I got my clients above asking price. And this is a big reason why, what's being removed? Like c commissions are going down, closing costs are not being covered. Correct. So, you know, if you're on the selling side, you're gonna think, why do I need to pay the buyer's closing costs when I'm getting multiple offers on the house? Right. You're, you're not going to be, you go to buy a house right now, you're not going to be asking for your closing costs. You're actually going to be saying, hey, you know what? I'll pay the seller's title insurance and title policy, which is, you know, just say around 1500 bucks. I'm yeah. Getting, we're submitting offers like that. So yeah. and I'm getting offers like that, especially from investors. You know, they, of course, want to use their title company and everything, but I have them coming in, you know, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 over asking price and saying, hey, <laughs> we'll cover your seller's closing costs. When it used to be like the house that you purchased recently, right? they covered all your closing costs and your prepaid items and gave you all appliances and blinds in the house. Now you're not getting any of that. What a change from one to two years ago. It, it's crazy. Is Florida becoming the new New York? You know, that's, that's, that's what we're hearing. No, I mean, no state income tax. Yeah. So people are moving down here, saving a ton of money. Taxes are low. You know, you buy a $500,000 house in New Jersey somewhere, you're going to be paying freaking ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a year. You buy a house down here, you're paying five grand a year. Yeah. Uh, what is, what is, you know, 475 bucks a month? Yeah. Saving $10,000 every single month on taxes right. on a home purchase. I mean, yeah, just in one to two years, I've seen some huge changes. Um, I mean, the valuations are just increasing like crazy. Like I look at some of the homes that I have and I just see the market values yeah. rising it's by so much. Skyrocketed. You know, yeah. By, you know, 10, 20, 30% even. And I'm like, hey, do I sell now or do I hold on and let it go up more? And that's the question that if I knew that answer, yeah. I'd be a billionaire by now or, <laughs> or, a, tri or a trillionaire. You right. Know, we never know what the market's going to do, but what a lot of different market analysis going on right now and some top advisors, especially in the lending industry and things like this, they think it's gonna be like this for the next year or two mm. and then it's gonna maybe plateau off a little bit, level mm -hmm. out uh, to create a more equal playing field for buyers and sellers. Yeah, I think that's good advice there. And um, George, what what's your average day been like now, man? What's going on with you? It's usually, I've been really buyer heavy. You know, I started mm. this about five years ago in the real estate market. I've worked with a lot of buyers. So now those buyers are turning into sellers. So right now I'm really heavy on the listing side of things. So I'm listing a lot of houses and average time on the market is, you know, two days on the market. And usually we're putting properties on on Thursday. We're going into multiple offer situations and we post up that we're gonna be accepting an offer, highest and best on a Sunday evening. Um, that's literally what we're doing. We're selling houses on weekends now. And the last two houses that I listed, both of those properties, we got over list price mm. and they paid for my seller's closing costs. And you're, you're canceling MMA sessions now. You're not able to do as much fighting as you usually do, huh? You're, you're booked up. Yeah, booked up, but still, I still got to work on finding that, you know, health balance and life balance with work as well. So it's important to take care of your body too. What's, what's the big difference between your, your real estate market career now compared to one year ago and compared to two years ago? So two years ago, I did still hit the six figure income and I was just felt like I was really grinding it out Yeah, and almost grinding it out to the same as what I'm doing now, but not making as much and not being as efficient as I am today. Mm -hmm. And then coming up on maybe a year ago, I still don't think I was as efficient as I am now, but I still feel like I was on that grind, just not making as much and producing as much income as I am now. But I still don't think I'm all the way there yet. Have a lot to learn, 
and a lot more room to grow and develop, and th that's what I'm working for. Talk about some of those efficiencies. Um, Google Calendar, checklists, um, what have you done just to improve your scope of work? So, as you know, Victoria, my wife, she works with me full-time as well, and I think just we put a few different systems in place. Systems. In in terms of communication, the way we're organizing emails, the way we have our follow-up, our checklist with our clients. We have a huge board in our house. It's a, a dry erase board, a um, big piece of glass on my wall in the house that helps keep all the clients organized. You know, everyone you know has their different ways and yeah. Excel sheets and things like that, but I like to walk in my office and see all my clients that I have under contract, my follow-up tasks that I have to accomplish, and uh, just client relation management ship tools that I've been using. Yeah, you you got the life of an entrepreneur going on, and I know in in, in my life I have I have two careers. I have the the corporate career and I have the entrepreneur career. With with Amazon, um, wow, man, I mean it, it is a full time corporate job, especially in the mid level, upper level management. And then outside of work, on uh, doing these Airbnbs, which is, has now turned into more of the luxury side of things it's turned into a another management field as well too so when i look at both of the the fields that i'm in whether it's the corporate side or the entrepreneur side if you don't have systems in place to manage your work it can be a nightmare when i first started my first property one year ago or at this point S two south florida right yeah yeah south florida was just a entry-level duplex for a hundred and thirty thousand dollars and Hey, I got into that and it was an experience. I made mistakes and I saw success and I learned from it. And now property eight, nine or 10 at this point, um, I, I know how to manage it. I've learned these systems and these systems that help me keep in place stuff that works so that customers continue to come back to me, to us. And um, I think that something that's really important that you touched on there is really getting those systems down, whether it's in your corporate life or your entrepreneur life that really help you move in a good direction. Correct. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, with those systems in place, that helps you be more client centric, have better customer service, yeah. and better follow up. So not only does it help you, but it helps provide that extra level of care and professionalism towards your clients. Because at the end of the day, those those are your clients with your in your properties that you're helping represent. Get in there and taking care of them. Yeah, the, the customer, they need to know that you care. They, they don't need to know that you're a, a nice guy or a nice lady. They just need to know that you actually care and you're there to hear their concern. And when they notice that and they feel that and they sense that, your business is theirs and your referrals are theirs. And I mean, you definitely know a thing or two about referrals, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's how it works in this business. Hey, you, you do a good job. People are going to take care of people. Hey, they're going to send you referrals. They're going to help you out. You help them out. What, what's the most amount of referrals one client has ever sent you? Seven. Yeah? S seven clients. That's impressive. Military yeah. personnel or? Military. Military so connect. Helped this gentleman buy out. He bought, a, I think it was a $220,000 townhome up on the northwest side of Jacksonville. Oh, yeah? Uh, pretty far out there. Su super nice guy. Took extra care of him. Um, the, the house was under construction. It was new construction. Stepped him through the process. Mm -hmm. Really good, genuine guy. Had a lot of questions, a lot of concerns. He wanted to learn about the business and things like this. So I just, you know, fed him as much knowledge as I could. And he said, hey, before I could even say, if you have any friends, let me know. I'd like to help him. He's like, hey, if I have any friends or, you know, any new sailors coming to town, I'll make sure I send them your info so you can help them out. So I just literally, actually, we're still under contract with two of them, but I've helped seven of his clients. That's impressive. Seven of his uh, junior sailors um, get into homes. And also with all those clients as well they actually didn't pay any closing costs as well that, that's what it is in business man like when you really legitimately help customers and clients and they recognize that you're you're not a pushover you're not just a nice guy or a nice lady but you're you're genuinely your your time is money your time is sensitive you're professional you're there to get stuff done and then when they voice a concern to you and you take care of it they, they have no problem sending you their business because they want their friends and family to get that same level of customer customer satisfaction oh yeah what do you recommend to someone who wants to get started in real estate give george bloom or bobby ty a call <laughs> <laughs> um the, that's the thing a lot of people say oh i want to get into real estate and jump on board and you know i know the market's hot i want to get in here and say 
I want to flip houses. I want to go be a buyer's agent or a seller's agent, or I want to open up an office. There are so many different avenues in the real estate. Yeah, world you really, you really have to understand the avenues. It's correct. a very there's, good call out. You, there's so many different ways to make money in real estate. It's mm-hmm. not just saying, "Hey, I want to go sell houses with a buyer." You could go work for a builder. Yeah. In, in real estate, saying that you want to go represent buyers as a site agent for like. You know, Lennar, D.R. Horton, Dream Finders, David Weekly, any of there's a lot of big builders here in Jacksonville. You could go be a side agent for one of them, or you could be more on the entrepreneur side and go be just a regular agent representing buyers, sellers, investors, things like this. I think it's just important. Your, your be, list could go on so much deeper. Right. There's there's a million different ways to do things. Yeah. You know, for example, you're air, you're in the real estate market doing your Airbnbs. Yeah. There, there's a way to get into that. Airbnb and long term rentals. There you go. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, a lot of different ways, but I think the initial first step for one, I think it's important to if you're going to work on that buyer side or seller side, getting in with the right company. And, yeah. And also, you know, be licensed unless you're going to flip houses or things like that. You have a construction background and things like that. Yeah, my advice would be start small. Um, one of, one of the things that was nice about starting with um, a small one hundred and thirty thousand dollar home um, a few years ago was it was just a nice small early investment that helped show me, hey, how does closing work? Nice. Get all my bills switched over. Nice. How do you deal with renters that are moving in? Cool. You get that down. Now you can go to a $200,000, $300,000 home. Now you can have multiple properties and multiple listings. And then you start meeting realtors like yourself. You start learning all the ins and outs of realtor of uh, the real estate market. So yeah, I think starting small. And Low risk as well. You know, you're buying a hundred yeah. thousand dollar property. Most likely, you're going to be able to rent that for more than what the mortgage is. And absolutely, even, even with long term, if you didn't want to do short term. So, look at that. You've got to compare your cash flow versus, hey, this is covering my mortgage and my principal and interest and everything like that. So I'm making money there, but I'm also making, hey, I'm making three hundred twenty dollars a month on my cash flow right. as well. So there's a lot of different ways you have to look at that because people say, oh, it's only covering my mortgage. I'm not making any money. Well, you are. It's actually covering your mortgage for you. Right, absolutely. Um, how do you keep a book of growing business? Follow up. Mm. I believe it is so important to follow up with your clients. You check in with them. And I always let my clients know, just because we closed on this transaction and you're in the house, it doesn't mean that our relationship is over. Mm-hmm. If you ever have any questions about real estate or just want to check in, you know, don't ever hesitate to reach out. I'm here to help not only after not only before we close, but after we close as well. Mm-hmm. And to keep that book of business right now, right now I have a pretty big follow-up. I'm making calls to all my clients right now. Hey, just so you know, are you relocating out of state? What's your current situation right now with your job? Um, oh, and a lot of them, well, we were actually wanting to move back up north. We have family up there, and we were not sure how much we can get for our house. So at that point, I'll send them a market analysis of what their house is worth, how much I think they can get, what is their net going to be. Yeah, um, and it's important to lay those out in layman's terms because some people, you know, they don't do real estate every day. They don't understand all that. So it's funny when you say that because if you don't do that, if you just assume that everybody knows what you're talking about, that's that's not how it works. Yeah, this is exactly not how it works. Like that's like me coming and saying, "Hey, Bob, how's everything's good at Amazon?" It work, it goes like that, right? And if I use <laughs> Amazon terms, you can be like, "I don't know what the heck you're talking about." I don't know what's going on. So yeah, that's why it's really important to be transparent and also mm. explain in detail to your clients, maybe in a more simple term terminology or things like that, to really make sure they understand and they're on the same page as you when you're talking about real estate or you know what direction they want to go in. Um, George, briefly tell us about your uh, your project in West Virginia. Give us a little thirty second overview on that. Well, you know, after meeting you, Bobby, you mentioned that you had these Airbnbs, and I would heard of Airbnb before. I never really, you know, I never stayed in one before. You know, after we talked, at now I've stayed in about five or six Airbnbs mm. around the country, and yeah. actually around the world. We stayed in a, or other one over in Amsterdam when we went over there. Mm. And I was thinking, you know, love real estate, love helping buyers and sellers out and doing this job. But you know, thirty-two years old, I really want to get some passive income coming in. Right. So, you know, why not get an Airbnb? And I really want to be on like the health conscious side. I don't want to just like, hey, I don't want to buy some you know cheap property in Jacksonville or yeah. buy a regular cookie house, cutter or home, cookie cutter house, and rent out. I wanted to do something unique, and I have some property up in West Virginia. So what I'm doing is a little uh, timber frame cabin up there, mm-hmm. and you know 
trying to use all local source materials, organic materials, no like chemicals and things like this. There's not going to be any paint in there. Um, going to have a lot of natural light, huge windows. I'm partnering mm-hmm. with a few different vendors up there as well, um, doing some marketing material. And this is also going to be when I launch my YouTube channel as well. So mm. look forward to getting that to you guys um, to keep everyone informed. Um, I'm looking forward to that documentary. Um, That's going to be very interesting. Oh, yeah. Su- super excited for it. You know, I got a little, little bit of camera equipment that I got for the project and everything. And we're actually, uh, it's actually moving along a lot faster than I thought. Now, I didn't know I would have that much time, but actually all utilities uh, for the property you're going in June 11th so look for you know a week or two after that look for a nice video drop on yeah. YouTube for my first one uh, for the June 11th project up there getting all utilities in I uh, bought a John Deere tractor up there for some work on the farm <laughs> yeah um, have a couple buddies up there and expensive they- tractor Yes, yeah, like twenty thousand um, dollars. John Deere offers zero percent financing. Not bad. So mm-hmm. you know, got a great deal on that, and it's something that we're going to need to have up there. Uh, my father lives on the farm up there, so he's going to help with some management and things like that. And uh, yeah, super excited to get that going. I'm going to have a lot more to tell you guys when I do the video drop um, towards the end of June. Yeah, George, a lot of value added information on this podcast. As always, man, appreciate the updates on this podcast here, the real estate market. Um, definitely looking forward to hosting you on a podcast in Little Rock, Arkansas soon. So. Little Rock. Yes, I'll, I'll be there, which you're going to be purchasing a home over there. I will be. Yeah, and uh, there's going to be a nice podcast studio in there. And um, I'm assuming you'll probably be one of the first guests to um, huh. come on that podcast there. I'll, I'll definitely be there for that. All right, George. Thanks again. Always appreciate you. Hey, thanks for having me, Bobby. Have a good one.